let's do part three of the cash budget. Um, so here's the fun part and why I just pick a random company and go. So when we get here, what we're going to do is try to fill out the rest of the bottom here. Um, the next thing is like, well, what is our SG&A expense? So how much selling general administrative costs uh, as a percent of revenue do we have? Um, and I just have a plug number in here. And what you do is you go look historically and say, well, how much did they spend on SG&A? And when you look at someone like UMP, so if you go back to the financials we did back several videos ago, uh, what you're going to see is that in their income statement, there are no selling general administrative costs, um, which isn't probably possible that they don't spend any money selling and they don't have any administrative costs and things, but um, anyway, there it is. They don't have any, and I've looked through their notes financial statements and I can't find anything that would count. So uh, in that case, we could improvise a little bit. So the only thing we, we haven't really included is this other piece, and I don't know what's in there. We're going to use it just because we want some number in there. Uh, for your companies, generally, you should be able to do something like this. I just picked a random company. Here's Google's income statement. Uh, what you would do is take, here's their SG&A, and you divide that by their total um, revenue, right? And that'll tell you uh, what percent of revenue they're selling general administrative costs are. Uh, and you can do that for several years. So uh, you could do that over that, and then 17 million over 90 million, then 15 million over 75 million, and you can get a rough estimate of what percentage you should plug in there. So it's kind of an assumption, but you're using historic data. Um, oh, and then I'm going to go back to the cash budget. And then you're going to plug that number in here, whatever it is. For ours, I'm just going to put 5%, so I have something um, to wire up. But it's weird that they don't have anything broken out that way. Um, so anyway, then you already know what your revenues look like, right? We already have those up here. Here's our sales. And you just multiply by the percentage of SG&A uh, right there. And you have an assumption. So there you go. There's your cash for selling general administrative. You can fill that over if you want. Um, next is interest. Uh, so interest and taxes, um, you can do a couple different ways. Uh, probably the easiest way is to go look at, um, let's see, where's our quarter? So there's June, March. Um, if you go to cash flow statements, down at the bottom, here's your income taxes and interest paid. Um, and so you can just kind of spread those out like we did before. Uh, and so, uh, what was that? Income taxes was three, which is great. And then 203 on interest uh, in the first quarter. So interest equals 203 divided by three. We'll spread them out that way again. Um, and then we'll just do equals that tab equals that tab, um, and then taxes was 3 divided by 3, which I hope you know is 1, uh, and then we can do the same thing here again, so equals 1, equals 1. Again, I would tie these out with equals and things just to, so that when you're doing another year, you can um, put in a new number and it flows all the way through, um, so I'm just setting it up for long term rather than short term, uh, and then I'm going to do that for a couple more quarters. Now, the other thing we need off the cash flow statements um, is dividends. Uh, so the other thing that will come off the capital statements is dividends. And so if you go look, they did pay a dividend of 492 uh, million, I'm assuming, uh, yep, million in the first quarter. Uh, and you just want to see what month that landed in. So they usually pay it in one lump. Uh, and so we can go to Yahoo Finance here and look up UMP historical data. Dividends only. Um, I need back to January of oh, 17. Done. Apply. And then we'll go back and look. And so they had a dividend in February of 17 of uh, whatever that is. It doesn't matter. And the cash flow statement is going to give you the total amount, but it's 60 cents here. Um, uh, there's a chance of cash actually went out in March. Again, if you work there, um, you'll know this stuff. You'll know when the cash is delivered because this was probably the announcement date and things like that, but I'm not overly concerned about our thing being that perfect. Um, so anyway, uh, our first payment then was, what was it, $492 million. Uh, there was a dividend payment of $492 million in February. So 
four nine two. Uh, ooh, and all of our stuff here is in millions. Just it has been since we began, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, and so you have four of these throughout the year. So I'm assuming there'll be a May. So every three months you'll have another one. Uh, so let's go to the next cash flow statement, uh, June. Financial statements. Cash flows. I don't know why I didn't find it quicker. Sorry. Uh, dividends paid. Um, and this is for six months ended. Uh, so just be, be aware that the, the first payment we made already is in here. So you have to subtract that out. So 980. Uh, let me make sure on here. It was in May. Um, so I'm going to go to May. And I'm going to do... Uh, I already forgot, 890, is that what it said? Uh, it's this one, 980. Uh, so the second one will be equal, equals 9, if I could type, 980 minus this one. Uh, and that'll give us, in six months, now we've paid $980 million. Um, our taxes and interest in that one, our income tax is 977. Uh, so a lot higher than three, uh, like last time. Nine seventy-seven divided by three equals that. Equals that. And our interest is uh, three thirty-six. So that divided by three equals that. Equals that. And we're going to do this one more time from quarterlies, and then we'll use the. 10k to get the last one. Um, so let's go to nine months financial statements, uh, cash flows. So here's the end of September. Uh, the dividend is now at uh, 1.46. I'm sorry, 1460. Let me think of it that way. Uh, again, that was now paid in August. So I'm going to go to August equals 1460 minus the 488 minus this so that our nine months ended equals that number uh, and these they should be fairly consistently like this so they should be somewhat normal uh, they're probably buying back shares so they're actually going down a little bit um, things like that uh, interest uh, was income was 1557 and then 532 in interest so, 532 divided by 3 equals that, equals that, and then taxes, 1557. Oh. You know what, I didn't do those, subtract out the beginning. Uh, so actually our taxes and our interest, right? That's why it's growing. we got to subtract out what happened before. Sorry, so I'm going to, in the fourth month, I'm going to subtract out the three in the first three months, right? Because it's the six months ended. Uh, I need another parenthesis, don't I? Uh, 977 minus three. Divided by three, so I need that. Like that. <laughs> there we go. And then this one's going to be equal to oh, 1557. Minus the sum um, for six months. There we are. This will work better. We'll close that. We'll close that. We'll get that. Uh, there's probably still something on here, isn't there? 977. Huh, that might be right. Did we get 977 through the first? Yeah, so that's fine. So now that's fixed. Okay, so sorry about that. Um, and we need to do the same thing for interest. So when you put them in, you got to subtract out what's happened so far in the year. Uh, so 336 minus the sum of the first three months here. Like that. All right. Here we go. That looks more 
more like it, and then 532 minus the sum of the first six months of it, or nine months ended is right. There we go. All right, now we're in business. And now we just need the 10K so we can get the fourth quarter stuff. Uh, 10K right here, cash flows. And so our total dividends paid for the year was 1982. Um, and so November, I'm assuming, was the last payment. Yep. So in November, we need the total to end up at 1982. So this is equal to 1982 minus the first three dividend payments. So that our total year, and again, you can always check it then. All right, so then if I sum those four dividend payments, they should equal 1982, the amount total paid throughout the year. Uh, same thing for interest and taxes. So uh, income taxes should end up at 2112. Uh, so taxes should equal 2112 minus the sum of... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, like that. So the first 9 months divided by 3. Uh -huh. Whoa. Put a I put a parenthesis in the wrong place. Sorry. Here we go. Um, and again, if I sum that whole column, oh, then I want equals that. Equals that. Okay. Uh, so it should look like that, and then if I sum them all up, 2112, so the total for the year is 2112. Uh, total for interest needs to end up at 666, well that's unfortunate. Um, equals 666 minus sum. Uh, the left one, which is left, close, close. Um, divided by 3, tab, equals that, equals equals that. There we go. All right. Uh, that's better. So 666. So all our totals are correct. The only thing we need now is capital outlays. Uh, we'll do short-term interest in the next video, so don't worry about that. Oh, I should have been grabbing these while we go too. Uh, CapEx is going to be just like the ones we were doing. That's the other cash flow piece. So let's go back to the first cash flow statement and we'll look at capital. Um, investing activities, it could be listed as several different things. Plan improvements and all kinds of stuff, but here's capital investments. 811 is the first one. Uh, again, we're just going to spread these out evenly. Um, like this. Like this. Second quarter. Capital investments through six months was 1589. This equals 1589. Minus sum of these, close, close, divide by three, so there we go, oh, equals that, equals that, uh, through three quarters, capital, two, three, seven, nine, minus sum, oh, That, that equals this, equals this, and then the total year capital expenditures were 3238 equals 3238 minus sum of first nine months, close, close, by by three, equals that, equals that. And our total should be 3238. There we go. All right. So we're just spreading all this stuff out so we know when cash is hitting and is needed and stuff. Um, and then total disbursements then equals the sum of all of this stuff. Less disbursements, right? So less disbursements. So here's all the money going out. Uh, there's all the money going out by month. Control R, fill that over. And then next time we'll in the beginning cash balances or doing all the calculations down here. So I uh, will see you for round four next.